Hello, I'm Peter. Ah, oh, Pietka. That was my mother's name. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 20 Little Britain sketches. Martin, it's Linda. I've got the whole cast of Fraggle Rock here. The party will vote for the new leader on Thursday. You should be Prime Minister by the end of the week. What? Good morning, Mr. Pipkin. Andy, this is Mrs. Maid. I don't like her. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the legendary scenes from Matt Lucas and David Williams' hugely popular comedy series. From cheating politicians to silly receptionists, this sketch show satirized every aspect of British society. Number 20. Frog Lady Hailing from a town called Slut, this elderly lady has a unique hobby. We know you love your froggies. Oh, I love me froggies, me. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> One glimpse tells you how much she loves frogs, so when her friends host a frog-themed birthday party, things don't exactly go as planned. Turns out there's a difference in her opinion when it comes to fake and real frogs. Go on, give him a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> In a display of fear and rage, Letty Bell pulverizes the frog, much to the surprise of her friends and the audience too. Poor thing. <laughs> Number 19, Apology. Last week, I purchased a new camera, and whilst in my office in the House of Commons, I accidentally took a picture of myself naked. Sir Norman Fry, William's politician character, is perhaps not entirely honest with himself. In this sketch, Fry makes a public statement about a compromising position he has been found in recently. Alongside his family, he details the events, such as his appearing in a gay dating site, with increasingly unlikely excuses. However, shortly after my arrival, my clothes accidentally fell off. <laughs> At that moment, I slipped on a glacé cherry. It's clear that not even his own family are convinced, as the mental gymnastics on display here are all inspiring. Number 18. Look into my eyes. You don't get between a man and his thundercats. Kenny Craig, the down-and-out hypnotist, shares this scene with his dear old mum, who seems to weigh hand and foot on him. Look into my eyes, look into my eyes, the eyes, the eyes, not around the eyes, and look around the eyes, look into my eyes. You're under, you may be old and recovering from double hip surgery, but you're still perfectly capable of getting up and bringing the sugar bowl, honestly. Three, two, one, get back on Unwilling to interrupt his episode of Thundercats, Craig instead opts to hypnotise his mother into doing all the work for him. As the scene goes on, he continues to abuse his powers to make his mum do increasingly worse things. You're under. This is like an all-time classic episode of Thundercats. Quite frankly, astounded that you'd rather watch Songs of Praise, which is just all about God. Three, two, one. In fact, you now don't believe in God anymore, so you won't want to watch it ever again. But the last line leaves us wondering whether it was working at all to begin with. Sorry, love. Can I just get me glasses? It might work better with them on. <laughs> right. Better. Number 17. Rivals. You bet Sebastian will turn up again on this list, but for this entry, we're looking at his interaction with a one-off character. Before you rush into anything, perhaps you'd like to see what the British intelligence has to say. <laughs> and perhaps you'd like to see what the CIA has gathered. <laughs> Doting on the Prime Minister, as always, Sebastian is shocked when the US President brings in his own aide who in many ways bears similarities to Sebastian. And the two absolutely cannot get along. How dare you! Get your hands off me, please, sir! Get your hands off me! Get your hands off me! Boasting that their leader is better than the other, this scene quickly descends into chaos, and the two bicker throughout. Number 16, Orville Off Hours. Excuse me? Yeah? <laughs> you Orville? Yeah. This is one where you have to be British to get it. Orville the Duck was a popular character in the 80s who was puppeteered by Keith Harris. But this sketch takes a look at what he gets up to on his day off. So, uh, where's Keith Harris then? I don't know. It'd just be funny if he was here. Yeah, it's work. We don't spend a minute of the day together. We do have our own life as well. And surprisingly, he's just a normal bloke trying to get by. I'm actually going up for a part in the bill next week. When one supervan can't quite get the hint, Orville has to drive the point home. It may not be the most gut-bustingly funny sketch, but seeing Matt Lucas in that bizarre suit gets us every time. Oi, Orville, where's Keith? <laughs> oh, for 
God's sake. Number 15. Babysitter. It's hard to think of a more terrifying situation for a parent. When this couple's usual babysitter won't be available for the night, the agency sends over a rather odd replacement. Cue the towering Russian. Hello, I'm Peter. Ah, Pietka. That was my mother's name. <laughs> While it's rather obvious the couple are reluctant to leave their child in the care of this menacing figure, we get the impression they're too afraid to do anything about it. I will make sure nothing happens to your baby. I swear on your life. And despite his insistence that the baby will come into no harm under his watchful care, something makes us think it might. Hello? Your baby is fine. Thank you. <laughs> if anything happens to your baby, I will phone you immediately. Thank you. Hello? Your baby is fine. Number 14, making a breakthrough. Do you think the paying for sex has become an addiction? Yes. This one's short but sweet. A man seeks to understand his addiction. He turns to his therapist for guidance. The acting in this sketch is actually pretty solid with some strong emotional dialogue throughout. Sadly, after making a breakthrough, the session has to be cut short and they have to wrap things up. We'll pick up on this next time. <sighs> okay. Thanks. We're really left wondering where the joke is in this poignant scene, but when the man leaves the office, it hits us pretty quickly. You were right! Prozies! Well, you have to laugh, don't you? I know, you dirty bastard. Number 13, Gary's Nan. The granny-obsessed Jason made a number of appearances in season 1, but this is by far the cringiest. Helping his mate Gary carry some groceries, he meets and instantly falls in love with the elderly lady at the doorstep. Hello. What follows is a series of terribly uncomfortable flirtatious moves by Jason as we watch on in agony. Thanks for helping with the shopping. You are a good boy. I can be a bad boy sometimes. <laughs> the poor woman just doesn't seem to get it. It's only when he's caught with a mouthful of foot that he finally lays off. Get out. Number 12, Royal Correspondent. Oh, Peter Andre. Uh, no, not that one. We're talking about the BBC News Royal Correspondent from this sketch, who seems to have absolutely no clue. The Royals were attending their traditional Easter Sunday service. Textbook. Prince Charles there, he has magical powers. His news item is as unprofessional as you can get, from his weird titling of each royal family member, to his desperate pleas for Prince Andrew's attention. I met him loads of times, he's really nice, I really like him. Hi Andrew, Andrew! <laughs> nah, can't hear me. But what's weirdest of all is his fascination with Princess Anne, whom he sings a ballad for. It hurt me, Anne, and bite me, Anne, cause I want you, Anne, in the morning. Needless to say, the producer wants him gone. Problem? <laughs> Number 11, driving lesson. Some barely. Yeah. I'm here to give you your driving lesson. Perhaps the most unconventional driving coach you'll ever find in Britain. This former copper already starts things off on the wrong foot when his training car is a crudely put together police vehicle. Still, the two push forward, with the officer pushing him to drive faster and faster until he apparently crosses the line. Put your foot down! Whoa, faster! Faster! Isn't it a 30 mile an hour limit? Well, what speed are you doing? Uh, 72. Stop the car! Whether he's a real instructor or this was some weird elaborate roleplay, we're not likely to find out anytime soon. What's this? A poodle? No, I'll tell you what it is. It's boy racer. Just turned 17, gets into a car, thinks he's Nicky Lauder. I've got my eye on you. All right, all right. Number 10, Ray McCoonery. This eccentric hotel owner lives in a far-out fantasy world where sprites inhabit radios and taxes are paid for with magic beans. You'd like to know my secrets, would ya? <laughs> As such, he flat out refuses to give a simple answer to a simple question, because life's never that straightforward. What do you mean, yes there are nuts, or yes you know? Yes! Obviously. 
Armed with a piccolo and an over-enthusiastic tone of voice, he's ready with a riddle at a moment's notice, leaving his customers understandably confused. Does that answer your question? Number 9. Settling the Account For Bubbles de Vere, the Hillgrange Health Spa is her own permanent holiday resort. But her freeloading flamboyance comes to a head here, when the spa manager tries to settle his sizable bill. Yeah, it's really just about this payment situation. You've been with us for over five months now, we still haven't received anything. Unperturbed, Devere shamelessly continues to outstay her welcome, using the facilities as if she owns them. Hello, Gita. My turn now, darling. <laughs> Oh, sorry darling, see you at dinner. And when the manager refuses to be blatantly fobbed off, Bubbles truly turns on the charm. Number 8. The Fussy Shopper The softly spoken Mr. Man has a very particular taste in almost everything he buys, making him a nightmare for Matt Lucas's humble shopkeeper. I was just wondering if you had any books on medieval English music between the dates 1356 and 1390. But the well-prepared proprietor always tries his best, with more than a little help from the never seen but often heard Margaret. There should be one over by the Mike Gatting autobiography. Oh yes, here we are. The history of medieval music. 1356 to 1390. So, with Mr. Man browsing for books, the shop owner surprises him by having exactly what he needs. The rest of the transaction isn't quite so successful, though. You, uh, you must really like reading. Oh no. Unfortunately, I'm blind. Number 7. Sing the theme tune. A recurring character, Dennis Waterman, is a direct, if slightly strange, parody of an actual actor and singer. Hello! <laughs> Dennis! Lovely to see you, dear heart. Come in. Played by David Williams, he's extremely small and exceptionally timid, reporting to his agent in the hope of landing a dream role. As long as he can, well, you know. So they want me to star in it, write the theme tune, sing the theme tune? No, uh, I think they just want you to be in it this time. A joke that's rooted in the real-life Waterman's apparent tendency to sing his own little title tunes. The actor was reportedly unimpressed by the caricature at first. Do, 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 do. I'm running much too fast. Can't escape from the past. I'll be so good for lucky running. But he still appeared as a special guest for Little Britain Live. Number 6. Careless Whisper. This one really was a long time coming. For an ongoing sketch, Sebastian Love aids the Prime Minister, all the while harboring an almighty crush on his boss. Sebastian, thank you so much. You know I couldn't have done it without you. And as the PM puts on a party to celebrate another election win, the stars seem to finally align for him and his assistant. With George Michael on the speakers and a slow dance on the cards, Sebastian makes his move. <laughs> But the moment doesn't quite play out how he planned it. Do you perhaps have the, the slightest crush on me? <laughs> Number 5. Vanessa Feltz As a leading Little Britain character, Marjorie Dawes does not mince her words. Next time you feel peckish, have a bit of dust. She heads a local Fat Fighters club and spends most of her time insulting the members and delivering absurd dieting tips. But when Vanessa Feltz hosts a Q&A, Marjorie cuts a conflicted soul. Well, I think it is. Yeah, I do. <laughs> do Don't make me laugh. This may be big, but you are something else. She flits between flattering her guest and trying to humiliate her, always believing she's one step ahead, until the tension overflows in outrageous fashion. Yes, I've got a question for you, Vanessa Feltz. Number 4. Computer Says No Setting new standards for poor customer service, Carol Beer's also responsible for one of the most successful sketch show slogans of all time. Computer Says No. An unhelpful employee extraordinaire, for the show's third series, she works in a travel agent, routinely ruining holidays for every single customer. Wanna meet Mickey Mouse? Just be a man in a suit, but <laughs> what you want. <laughs> Sorry, flights to Florida. Computer says no. With an infectious lack of enthusiasm, she quickly curtails this family's excitement by turning their Disney dream into a dreary nightmare. And when the other options seem bleak, does Carol let them down gently? No, no, she doesn't. Computer says no. <laughs> Number 
Number 3. Daffod Thomas Another instantly recognizable character, Matt Lucas's Daffod Thomas staunchly believes he's the only homosexual around, despite the ongoing and increasingly obvious evidence that he clearly isn't. You know, I'm the only gay in this village. Oh, I just dream of the day I can meet other gays who know what it's like to be a gay. But while Daffod shows off his sexuality whenever he can, he never actually acts upon it. I'm a gay. I don't think so. And though he claims he wants to meet other gay people, he's far from friendly in this introductory scene. This village just isn't big enough for the both of them. Well, maybe I should go. Yes, maybe you should. We've already got one gay in Clandui Breffy. We don't need another one. Number two, the dance-off. Teenage delinquent Vicky Pollard is never far from trouble, and whether she's breaking the law by stealing from a supermarket or trading her baby for a Westlife CD, she's got an answer for everything. Vicky, where is the baby? Swapped it for a Westlife CD. Turning mid noughties chav culture into an inescapable catchphrase, in this sketch she encounters a rival group of girls on her estate, and the two gangs find an unusual way to settle their differences. But Vicky definitely wins, yeah, but no but. <laughs> we as well the best dancers. Number 1. Andy Makes a Splash Today's winners are arguably the best known faces from the show, and we all know the drill. Yeah, well, that one. On that one? Yeah. Uh, well, that is Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, no. Lou looks after Andy, who pretends to need a wheelchair, but leaves it to perform a series of surprising actions whenever Lou's back is turned. Hey, <laughs> oh. Peaceful here, isn't it? <laughs> Throw in a few memorable one-liners, and you have a firm fan favourite. Even Matt Lucas has said he liked playing Andy Pipkin more than most characters. Their shenanigans at the swimming pool are amongst their most famous. What a kerfuffle. But he does have a slight fear of water. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.